Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism may be thrombotic, may be non-thrombotic. So we go for thrombotic pulmonary embolism first, thrombotic pulmonary embolism. Then we'll discuss about non-thrombotic, non-thrombotic pulmonary embolism, non-thrombotic pulmonary embolism. So if you go to the thrombotic pulmonary embolism, there will be thrombus formation in the deep leg vein, especially vein inside the calf muscles. So there will be thrombus formation. in the deep veins of the calf muscles. Of the leg. Okay. So that is the beginning of thrombus. That thrombus will go to the lung and it will cause pulmonary embolism. So from the, this vein, it goes to the popliteal vein. <coughs> popliteal vein is present in the popliteal fossa. Popliteal fossa is located behind the knee joint. From popliteal vein, it goes to the femoral vein. From femoral vein, the thrombus, the thrombus become the embolus. It is the formation of thrombus in the deep vein. Once it is dislodged, the thrombus is called embolus. So we have two terms. One is thrombus, that is thrombosis, collection of platelets, blood cells and blood clotting factors there is the thrombosis once it is dislodged we call it embolus so in the popliteal vein there will be embolus that embolus goes to the femoral vein from femoral vein that embolus goes to the external iliac vein From external iliac vein, we get the common iliac vein, common iliac vein. From common iliac vein, if you follow this way, okay, so from common iliac vein, we get the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava from inferior vena cava the embolus goes to the right atrium of the heart right atrium of the heart then from right atrium goes to the right ventricle of the heart right ventricle from right ventricle, the, the embolus goes to the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary artery. Pulmonary trunk and 
goes to the pulmonary artery. Arteries. Okay. So this way, peripheral vein from the calf muscle thrombus with the embolus goes to the popliteal vein, embolus goes to the femoral vein, external iliac vein, common iliac vein, inferior vena cava, right atrium of the heart, right ventricle of the heart, pulmonary trunk, bifurcation of pulmonary trunk, left and right pulmonary artery. So the embolus may block here in the pulmonary trunk bifurcation or pulmonary artery. We call it pulmonary embolism. Okay. We got the course of the pulmonary embolism from the beginning to the termination. Then we'll find find out what are the predisposing factors for pulmonary embolism. That is very important. Predisposing factors. Okay. Number one is the number one is the prolonged bed rest. Okay, bed rest with immobilization. This is very important, especially in case of orthopedic surgery we go there in surgery especially orthopedic surgery or multiple trauma multiple fracture multiple surgery to a patient who is staying in the bed immobilized for a long time okay number two number three will go to severe trauma like barn barn or other severe trauma multiple fracture multiple fracture that make a person immobile multiple fracture okay we got that then we we'll go to the congestive heart failure congestive heart failure it is associated with pulmonary embolism Then we we'll get the the use of contraceptives, oral contraceptives by the female, oral contraceptives. Those are rich in estrogen. Estrogen rich. Okay. Oral contraceptives in women and women over the age of. 30, 35 who are smoking, they have more chance to get pulmonary embolism along with oral contraceptive, estrogen rich or just oral contraceptive. But if they smoke or if they are above the age of 30 or 35, more chance of getting pulmonary embolism. Okay, so we got that. Then disseminated cancer disseminated cancer okay that may lead to pulmonary embolism okay then we have some blood cognition disorder like factor 5 laden mutation factor 5 laden mutation that cause the blood clotting problem mutation okay so these are the predisposing factors for pulmonary embolism again there is thrombus inside the muscles in the leg maybe in the pelvis also possible okay then it goes to the inferior vena cava, then the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary trunk bifurcation, branches of the pulmonary artery, then there may be embolus there. These are the predisposing factors, we got that. Then what is the pathogenesis? What are the pathogenesis of pulmonary embolism? Pathogenesis 
depending on the size of the embolus, size of the pulmonary artery. Okay, so it depends on on number one size of the embolus. Big on embolus, big problem. Then size of the pulmonary artery. Size of the pulmonary artery. Then it also depends on the ischemic status of the person who is ischemic, they have more chance to get pulmonary embolism. Status of the heart and lung, heart and lung. Okay, we got that. The pathogenesis depending on these factors. So what happened? There will be, this is the heart is here and the four chamber we have from the right ventri ventricle we have the pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk is there it, it will go through bifurcation bifurcation of pulmonary trunk so what happened there may be an obstruction here okay there may be an obstruction here okay so there may be an embolus here at the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk. Okay, so what happened? Or it may be beyond that. Okay, then there will be proximal part, there will be pulmonary hypertension. Okay, proximal part, what is the proximal part of the block? Blocked by the embolus, there will be pulmonary hypertension there will be vasospasm vasospasm especially it is neurogenic neurogenic vasospasm okay then what happened so there will be vasospasm and release of thromboxin A2 release of thromboxin A2 thromboxin A2 and also there will be release of thromboxin A2 and there will be release of serotonin and serotonin due to this blockage serotonin okay. So this will be released. This is the problem. So the part beyond that obstruction, what will happen? This proximal to the obstruction, there will become pulmonary hypertension, vasospasm. The part of the lung beyond that obstruction, what are the problem? There will be a lack of lack of surfactant surfactant because of lack of blood supply okay and there will be epilepticis alveoli will be collapsed lung alveoli will be collapsed okay epilepticis epilepticis okay. so this is the heart here and this is the right ventricle this is the pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk okay and this is pulmonary artery so we may have block beyond that block may be here block may be further down okay so two-way problem there may be proximal pulmonary hypertension distally there will be atelectasis due to lack of surfactant okay there may be right to left shunt that may happen right to left shunt okay because there is some opening in the foramen open that may lead to right to left shunt there is a possibility and we must not forget we may have an embolus here the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk 
we call a saddle thrombus okay saddle thrombus in that condition it is very much acute condition this happens suddenly and person may die very suddenly very quickly if there is blockage of the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk that is the saddle thrombus okay so we got right to left shunt there may be chance of saddle thrombus and there is chance of pulmonary infraction pulmonary infraction in 10 percent 10 to 15 percent cases pulmonary infraction but this does not happen usually because we know that lung lung we have lung 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 has blood supply from the pulmonary artery also from bronchial artery so pulmonary infection is less but it may happen if the medium sized branch of the pulmonary artery is blocked then there may be pulmonary infraction especially to the person who has ischemic heart disease lack of blood flow through the coronary arteries in those persons there may be pulmonary infraction and that may lead to hemoptysis or hemorrhage okay it may be hemorrhage it may be there may be hemorrhage pulmonary hemorrhage bleeding okay that is possible so that may lead to hemoptysis or cough may come out with blood that is really present in 10 to 15 percent cases to the person who has ischemic heart disease okay we got that so we'll get another term that is called acute cord pulmonary acute cord pulmonary okay what happened if the major artery is blocked what will happen the blood cannot go to the lung so there will be lack of return of blood from the lung to the heart so there will be right-sided heart failure very acute right-sided heart failure with anoxia right-sided heart failure okay and this happens very quickly okay so we got that problem so we got the acute core pulmonary we got the we got the right to left shunt Okay, we got the saddle thrombus if it is in the bifurcation pulmonary trunk. Okay, we got that. Now, how can we diagnose what are the signs symptoms? Signs and symptoms, the clinical features, signs and symptoms. Okay. So, if it is acute core pulmonary or obstruction in the bifurcation pulmonary trunk, so the person may die even before manifesting signs and symptoms so it, it may be possible without any sign symptom person may die of pulmonary embolism in the united states around 50000 people die from pulmonary embolism okay 50000 people die from die from pulmonary embolism in a year embolism in a year okay so a lot of small pulmonary embolus it go it may go unnoticed okay so in, we got this other recorded case of pulmonary embolism so sign symptom if you go there there will be difficulty in breathing dyspnea there will be trachypnea, excessive respiratory attempt, trachypnea. There may be pain, it is not always present, pain because of infarction. Okay, we may have pain. Okay, then in the, in the lung, we may get the, the really in the lung, really in the lung. Okay, so these are the signs symptoms of pulmonary embolism but it may not manifest in lot of people may die without any specific sign symptoms okay so we got that this is the lungs okay lungs in the right lung 
left lung, okay, left lung, right lung, okay. So we got that some symptoms. So how can I diagnose diagnostic test? Diagnostic test. Chest X-ray may be very much normal. So we do ventilation perfusion scan. Ventilation perfusion scan. Okay. We also assess the assess the blood level of plasma D diameter. Plasma B and P. Okay. And also troponin, cardiogenic troponin. Okay. We may do EKG or ECG that may show variable feature in the ST segment and T segment. ECG that may be helpful in some individual. Gold standard is pulmonary angiography that is not commonly practiced. Pulmonary angiography. Okay, that is gold standard. So that is not commonly practiced, but it is the gold standard. Okay, we got that diagnostic test. Now management. Management. Management, best management is prevention. So early immobilization. Early immobilization. That is very important. Okay, so that is most important. Then we have the thrombolytic therapy. Thrombolytic therapy. Like that of heparin or warfarin. Or warfarin. Warfarin. You may put inferior vena cava filter inferior vena cava filter okay and okay and embolectomy if it is large embolus visible that is another option okay so these are the managed we got that now we go to the non-thrombotic pulmonary embolism. Non-thrombotic, non-thrombotic pulmonary embolism. Okay, so. The, it may be caused by air, entry of air through the intravenous route. Fat may come in case of fracture of the bone. Amniotic fluid may enter during pregnancy. Amniotic fluid. And we must not forget the pregnancy period, perinatal period is also one of the predisposing factors to develop pulmonary embolism. So, amniotic fluid may come, okay. Bone marrow, bone marrow may also cause embolism, especially in some person who suffer from sickle cell anemia. So, air embolism, fat embolism, amniotic fluid embolism, bone marrow embolism is possible, okay. We'll get another type of pulmonary embolism, that is the pulmonary embolism, of the drug abuser of drug, you can say intravenous drug abusers. Okay, they use the cal that is the magnesium trisilicate magnesium trisilicate 
or for adulteration of the intravenous fluid for adulteration or adulteration okay so this cause as this causes granulomatous changes granulomatous changes in the interstitium of the lung interstitium of the lung lung and pulmonary vessels okay so that may lead to fibrosis pulmonary fibrosis and pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension okay we got that the complication due to internal due to adulteration of the internal fluid by tilt by the drug abuses okay so that's all about the pulmonary embolism if you like my video please support my channel please share the information with your friends and please feel free to ask me questions please support my channel subscribe me and have a nice day bye now